game wasn't won tonight. The game was won in your preparation, how diligent you were, how disciplined you were. That gave you an opportunity to perform like the way you did tonight. The memories have been created. That's what you asked for. Lifelong memories. As a group, we'll never forget it. And I couldn't be any prouder. And I've, I've, I haven't said a sentence with a full stop in for weeks. But I will tonight. I'm proud of you. Very proud of you. Victory coach Kevin Musket after a third straight loss, this time to Brisbane 2 1. The booze for Kevin Musket rang louder from the Victory faithful. Three losses in a row for him. When uh, your face flashed up on the big screen, you were booed pretty heavily by your own fans and, and chants against you. The supporters at Melbourne Victory are very, very unhappy. Look, it's. Um, it's you know, it's not, uh, it's not great, it's not uh, uh, a nice place to be, but uh, no one could put me under any more pressure or strain or stress or whatever anyone wants to call it than, you know, I was putting myself under. I choose to be in this environment uh, and, you know, nights like that, that comes with the territory. And um, the reality was, uh, you know, we weren't performing. It's not something that sits comfortable with me. I think the, you know, the message for all of us is you know, we've got to be accountable for, for our own performances. You know, that wasn't good enough in the first half, far from it. It was just such a roller coaster season. We would lose a few and then there would be shambles here and then we'd, we'd win two or three in a row and say, here we go, we'd, we'd beat City, beat Newcastle, and then we're back and then we'd lose to, to Brisbane or, or, or whoever it was the next week. We got a bit of stick this year, which uh, was understandable just because we, we weren't consistent. You have a period where you thought you were actually getting somewhere and then we'd hit a, hit a wall again. So that seemed to be a recurring theme all the way through. They're stale. Melbourne victory to me looks stale. What's the so, answer though? That's what I'm saying, yeah, that's what a good question. What do they need to do? Oh, they do need to change things. Change personnel? Yeah, how, well, it's hard to change personnel because of the yeah. way everything's structured, isn't yeah. it? Oh, you've got to change things, you've got to change him, you've got to change him, you've got to change the structure, you've got to change. Yeah, well, you know, one, everybody says that, so you know, you're not the first person to say it. And you know, if you want to come out and say that, say what? Identifying a problem is the easiest thing in the world. You know, having solutions is, uh, um, is the tough part. They don't seem to have a plan B, and no. that's certainly something that, uh, that they're going to have to rectify. For me, they're in a mini-crisis and have been for some time. The turning point was when we kind of accepted the reality we were in. You know, I think when we sat down one day and you know, had a group talk and just said, Realistically, we can't finish first or second. What do we want to do? What do we want to get out of this? We come together like a team and the staff and everybody come together and uh, we talk a lot with each other. We had uh, some really nasty conversations which, uh, which sometimes is important, you know, you have to tell the truth. It was not nice, but maybe it was helpful. It realigned us, you know, it realigned us with a, a focus going forward. Uh, rather than looking over your shoulder and, you know, what, what we've left behind. Leroy George! Oh, brilliant! Broxham. A lovely ball, and there is the goal for Leroy George! Barbarossa! Yes! Via Harris! Ding! Oh, my goodness! Clipped in by Tracy! There it is, 2-1, Teddy Asio! The midweek game leading into round one of the finals, we played Shanghai in what was a dead rubber for Maysell purposes, and we played a lot of the players who hadn't featured much throughout the year. And the boys put on a great performance and we got a result, and I don't know, there's just this really, really good feeling after that game, and we were heading into the finals. I think all finals should be uh, exciting. It's uh, you know a sense of 
uh, achievement one that uh, you know you're playing in finals and we've been uh, you know getting stronger and stronger at home and uh, we look to build on that uh, tomorrow night. What a huge rivalry this is, Melbourne victory, <laughs> Adelaide United. I mean, this one, it's going to be an absolute this firecracker. Yeah, this yeah, always absolutely. brings something a little bit special. It's not just another game because when you get here, there's different things that are going on, so you've got to prepare for it. Leading up to the game, the boys just really wanted to show, you know, why we should be in the final series, especially being rid of uh, so early. Every final series, every important game, it's always been, you know, very intense, and sometimes it can be painful at times, you know, just hard. I had a strong belief that uh, the team is ready. We are ready for the playoffs. You lose, you're out, you know, so um, in those games, anything can happen. Adelaide and, and Melbourne had always difficult games. It was a tough game. Adelaide are always a tough opposition. And uh, they closed down the space. They actually played a great game tactically against us. You know, Adelaide set up how they set up and uh, play the way they want to play. Everyone plays to their strengths. But, uh, you know, losing the ball in, in, in front of their front three, let alone, you know, in front of the back four was causing us issues. Adelaide still looking for an opening. He's trying to slip it through. Here's Leroy George. Big chance for Melbourne victory. What a challenge. The pop out there for Antonis, who was trying to place it in that top corner. Good idea. There we go. Half time at Abbey Park. Pretty attritional stuff at half time. It's Melbourne victory nil, Adelaide United nil. main thing for us, the clearest focus, was to uh, you know, move things uh, quick and receive the ball facing forward um, so we can get the likes of Costa uh, and Leroy uh, in space uh, with the ball going forward. Kevin Musket has delivered his half-time team talk. No changes made by either coach. Barishas oh, yeah. is having a nice little chat with us and Gullum. Free kick situation. Tailing it by George. Came off Adlong. It was Valera there. Field for handball. Nothing doing. Tonis chopping down Absalonson. He's taken free kick. And Miliusnic is onto it. The bounce will favour him as well. Miliusnic scores for Adelaide United. But that is a big, big strike for Adelaide. I remember looking at uh, Reese Williams just in a bit of shock because we were in control when we were playing well that game. I'm just looking at Reese like, <laughs> how is this possible? The other lead player slicing around me and celebrating in front of me and I was thinking, man, this is going to be a tough night. I was worried. You know, then there was a first, I think, couple of minutes we were still in our half. We weren't really progressing. Barbatia, oh, Thomas, brilliant reaction stopped. Of course, you are upset, 1-0 uh, uh, behind a uh, home game, but uh, yeah, we never give up. Bit of space here, which has been at a premium for victory for Thomas Deng. Now Barbarousas, cutting inside, Garuccio still going, Barbarousas, Leroy George, 1-1! It's a really good header from Leroy George, who punches it home, a thumping header. I just closed my eyes and hit the ball and go in. I was just so happy, you know, firstly that he scored. Uh, you know, I went to one of the other lead players to tell him that, uh, you know, who laughed last, laughed better. It was really emotional game, but uh, 
was something really special after Leroy scored because you're back in the game and it's so important to stay alive in the playoffs. The atmosphere at Amy Park after, after Leroy scored, it was, yeah, like the stadium was on fire. It felt for me that it was a full stadium. Generally in finals and generally in games, the atmosphere, you know, our, that our members and fans create is second to none. They'd taken the knocks with the team, you know, throughout the season and, uh, and they started to believe in, uh, that, uh, you know, we're hitting our, hitting our straps and, and performing really well at the right time of the season. Leroy George getting the better of Moroni, and off he goes, the Dutchman. Fans rising. Barisha! Izzo saves with the feet. Now we're perhaps heading for extra time at Amy Park. I wasn't really thinking about extra time at that point. I just felt that, you know, we were in total control. You know, you, you get that feeling that a goal's coming. Everybody knew at some point that Bessar Barisha was going to have a moment in the final series, he always does. Uh, it was probably a more spectacular moment than we've seen in recent past from him. Barbarousas leaves his way past the Saez, still he goes on, looking for Barisha! Oh my words! That is an extraordinary goal! It's one of my best. Like always, the defender is holding me and he is so tight on me. It was so difficult uh, situation, but when the cross came, I couldn't do nothing else than to do the bicycle. I couldn't take a touch because the defenders were all too close. So the only thing was the bicycle and uh, I'm happy I did this because it was so important. It's a goal, you don't really score much in career in football. You know, you, you kind of stop getting surprised that he's doing it. I think I just walked over the bench and got a drink, to be honest, because I, got, I get used to seeing him, seeing him do it. You know, it's something special if you can uh, share these moments with our home supporters. Uh, they are always very patient and always committed to this club. What a finish from Bessar Borussia. that went through the, um, the, the team on that, uh, on that night, uh, setting us up for, to be able to do something that no one's ever done before. Immediately that night I thought to myself, this, this is a psychological advantage for us for next week's game, because no doubt in my mind everyone in Sydney would have preferred not to play us. Coming out with the win like that uh, was just amazing, because then I had even more feelings and uh, uh, and confident that that's going to be a great uh, year, a good finish. I'm so thankful as a father to, to have the opportunity, my kids can see me playing football and uh, to see these moments. You know, my, my son was really proud. There's a lot of love in my house and, you know, they're my strength, otherwise I couldn't have done half the things I've done. To have their support is, is massive for me, massive. It's something special. Uh, I can have these moments with my family and they can see uh, that they play. So it's something uh, unique and I'm very thankful. We're ready, uh, regardless of who, who we're uh, playing. I think it's important that we get over tonight first and we'll prepare well this week. Um, and uh, you know we'll be stronger again next week. I truly believe that uh, you know we've only been playing at 50, 60 percent of our capabilities against Melbourne this year. Mentally, they're in, in great shape. Physically, 
in outstanding shape. So, you know, we go into this game with a huge amount of belief and, as you said, we're at Fortress Allianz tomorrow night and we expect to win. You know, we, we win every time we play against Melbourne Victory and that's something that we're taking into the weekend and, um, you know, we're using that confidence to, uh, to put in a, a, a good performance. Every time a team talks like this shows weakness. It didn't really phase us because they were basically putting pressure on themselves. It was music to our ears and my ears in particular. I genuinely thought that uh, they didn't believe in the, the comments they were making and that's why there was no response from us whatsoever. You know, Bessart tells one of our boys after the game that we're, you know, we're such a great team and they can't beat us, it gives us even, much, even more belief. No, that's not true. I will never say to a team, you are unbeatable. So it's definitely not coming from me. There was no thoughts of, uh, you know, we haven't beaten them and we can't beat them and uh, all the energy was spent on what was important. Kevin Muscat's getting his side ready for a spot in the grand final and claims he's finally found a way to beat the club's biggest rival. A new game plan, if you like, to, to go across there and win, and that's where all their energy's been. If they have got a new game plan, it's, it's something that may, they may have only practised for two days. And uh, you always know that's a dangerous thing to change things at this time of season. Do you read the, uh, some of the comments coming out of Allianz this week that you might be mentally fragile and the rest of it and use it as motivation or are you just a little bit better away? Or? You know, what it has done well, is created a whole little bit of expectation, hasn't it? And uh, um, just imagine if they lose. The night before the Sydney game, we were in a hotel and I, I generally got an unbelievable feeling at dinner. I felt the need to just say to him, you know, I can sense something special here. Yeah. Start, you know, slowly visualising while you're relaxed. I can sense everybody's relaxed. It's good because you know you've done the work. You know you're ready, you know you've got the game plan, you know you get the job done, so it's good. You start visualising car line, five minutes, 96 minutes. Have got that feeling, you start visualising that now. Good stuff, well done this week, boys, good stuff. We're ready to go and all our energy is going to be spent on what we think is important. Tonight, Sydney FC and Melbourne Victory. These two again. Not for the trophy this time, but for the right to contest it. And this big blue, the seventh time they've met in the finals, promises to be just like all the others. Tight, tetchy, transfixing. Generally, the back end of the warm-up involves the back four and the midfield sort of getting their positional sense and playing the ball back and forwards across and just getting a feel for where they're going to be on the pitch. And I was just watching and I saw Reese Williams play a ball and then he sort of went to the ground. I went to, to play a long ball and I stepped. The feeling is like someone in the crowd threw something at me. My first reaction was to look behind to see what was on the floor or look in the crowd to see who threw it. And then I tried to get up and walk and once I knew I couldn't walk, I knew that was, that was time. Trimmers comes over to me and he says, mate, it's not looking good. I, what are you talking about? And uh, turned away and I see Reese on the floor and automatically I want to be positive. No, he'll be all right, he'll be all right. And then as soon as he stood up and he couldn't put weight on his, uh, on his leg, a bit of trouble here. And uh, immediately I just thought about him, you know, all the hard work that, uh, that he's done. Um, and yeah, naturally then your thoughts go to, towards the team uh, and what needs to be done. Um, but, you know, he didn't deserve that. They had to help him off the pitch. He wasn't in a good way. So it was, it was fairly obvious that he wasn't going to be right. I knew I wasn't going to play and I just wanted to, to get off that bed to put the crutches away and just be there for the boys, you know. Um, that's what I said to Will, the physio and the doctor. I said, look, just leave me and, and concentrate on the boys, get them ready for the game. I think back, I've missed two World Cups, two Asia Cups, uh, playoff finals, these finals, this, that and the other. So what's another one on the list, you know? I'll keep my record, I've never played in one. The feeling to go from about to play in such a big semi-final to, to watching it, it was, uh, it was hard to take. You know, all the sacrifices that the individuals made, all the sacrifices you made as a team, all the challenges you've overcome. You know, another hurdle, exactly where we want to be, exactly where we want to go. And the next hurdle's in front of us, let's go and jump it. It's not an issue, can't As we spoke about every battle, it's gone from hundreds, it might be a thousand battles. All we're fighting for is one and the next one. You know what? It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect, can't. It's what we do next, Tess. Tess, it's what we do next. And then ultimately, Leroy, our actions have to reflect someone, a team, that wants it more. And I can see it in your eyes. We want it more. 
That was for him that night, without doubt. Here we go again. It's the 46th Big Blue with a grand final spot at stake. So once more and with feeling. Leroy George takes over and the space here for Costa Barbarousas. And it thumps back off the post. And victory with that close to drawing first blood. We were playing really well and we're beating them to every challenge, which is, is a key indicator. I can sense when we're really on top of it. Getting to that ball first, we're a step ahead of them. The only goal was, again, just something in our way. Neil runs over it, there's Yeski fires it in, oh, there's the opening goal! It was, our own goal was unlucky, just a free kick, uh, hit his head and go in, it can happen, it's football. Well, Stefan Negro wasn't supposed to be playing tonight. Maybe when he sees that again tonight, he'll wish he wasn't. We weren't too shocked, you know. We just tried to get into Steph's ear and say, look, man, don't worry about it. This is, this is finals, this is what it's like. It gets a bit crazy. As long as we score the next one, it doesn't matter. Barbarus is galloping onto that lovely through ball by Antonis. Barbarousas, oh, deflected in, all square, and Costa Barbarousas, who hit the post a few minutes back, has got his reward this time, and it's 1-1. In the past couple of years against Sydney, we missed a couple of chances early on, and they take one, and we, we seem to not be able to get away back, and to do that, I think, was plenty of the game still to play, was massive. Right from the outset, everyone's positive towards each other. Remember, we've learned. Without everybody coming, we can't do anything. It was a matter of uh, maintaining that uh, and seeing how far we could push ourselves and challenge the boys and, uh, and carry on with that intensity uh, in the second half. Oh, come on. Oh. 45 minutes to go and then potentially into extra time. That's an error by Valente, that could be in here, victory. That's up, Marisha trying to square it up, Toisi! 2-1 Melbourne victory in front of the Cove! And James Troisi, who scored an Asian Cup final winning goal in this city, has just netted one. That means just as much to those Melbourne victory fans. Neil, but uh, Stefan Negro to clear, it's a weak clearance though, Josh Brillante to thump it! Oh, and Lawrence Thomas, what a save, because I'm sure he saw that really late. Here's that change for Sydney, it's going to be Alex Bross to be withdrawn, and Matt Simon's going to be with us. We knew uh, that he was going to come on, and, and Sydney dramatically changed uh, the way they approached the game. Here's Yevsky's cross, oh, great header, what a save by Thomas! Straight into the action, brings out the best in the victory goalkeeper once more. Superb double save by Lawrence Thomas. I think the way we tried to defend was commendable because they were throwing absolutely everything at us. We're going to have late drama here. O'Neill into the box. It's a good win by Luke Wiltshire. Oh, off the crossbar! Extraordinary by Ben Warland, I think. O'Neill's ball in. Oh, Lawrence Thomas! Got in an awful mess. You know, we're fighting for everything. Kenny was at the back at some stages, heading the ball. I was just knocking long ball after long ball. You know, there was no science in that. It was just, you know, route one. Credit to Sydney in the end. They, they managed to force a goal upon us. Great drama, great tension at Allianz. Flicked on by Simon. Warland inside the box. Mirzieski with the chip, and it's Broxham away. Victory stand firm again. Almost out of their feet by Kevin Musket. This has got to be the last chance. Up it goes from Andrew Redmayne. Simon wins another good flick on. Carney inside the box. Chance here. Lawrence Thomas again. Mirzieski. Oh, it's an own goal. Would you believe it? Remarkable drama. When I went in, I was just uh, devastated, you know. I felt like I let the team down. I felt like I let myself, my family down. It was the flattest moment in a football game I've ever felt, I think. 
you know, you, you just stand there thinking this surely isn't happening. I remember I was looking at the ground on my knees and Terry was lying next to me. Look at the victory response. They, they cannot believe 15 seconds, we were told. I think I was actually a bit angry at the ref because I thought the time had gone over. Carl turned to the ref and said, show me your watch because the time's up. He goes, Carl, look at my watch, it's 10 seconds to go. Look, it's, it's still in time. It was almost crushing because you just, you, in that moment, you, you realised all the effort the boys had put in. The game was going to extra time and emotionally the question was how are the boys going to cope with this? The victory we're almost celebrating. Now they've got to regroup. You know, we were in a huddle and we were talking and you know trying to get the players to work towards injury time and forget about the goal Terry and refocus. You know, it's another challenge. And James Trevisi looks over and, and you know draws everyone's attention to you know their huddle. The taunt throughout the week was we're physically stronger than them, we, they're deficient in physicality, and, and half the teams on the floor get massages or laying down and and the boost that that gave the group, I've no doubt that um, that gave us energy. When they started singing my name and stuff, you know, it just spurred me more and more on. And uh, when they were giving me stink, you know, it just built me up, built me up, you know. And uh, I knew at that certain point I had to do something, you know, to get out of it. Back for Antonis. Antonis trying to curl it. Desperate to atone, isn't it? Quickly taken free kick, good awareness by Simon Carney. Those at Bobo's in space, it's Bobo! And Lawrence Thomas again, keeps it out. There we go, end of the first period of extra time. Still, they cannot be split. Yeah, it was hard, you know, you want to help the boys as much as possible, and I felt as though I couldn't. The, the mental barrier was repaid in spades when, you know, Terry could have, uh, you know, fallen in a heap and, and started feeling sorry for himself, but to mentally have the strength the courage uh, and and the physicality to do what he did up when picking the ball up in in his own half certainly put uh, you know, the, the mental side of things to bed as well. Tony's had no right to get through there, really. Still, he goes on. O'Neill giving chase for Lawnley. Still, Terry Antonis has he won it for Melbourne victory? The villain turned hero in navy. Congratulations to the Victory fans! Are they heading to a sixth grand final? Extraordinary! To run that far, that late in the game, physically, is a big ask. And then mentally, to have the character to take that on after everything that happened, to say, no, no, I'm going to change the game now. And then to go do that is, is massive. We were kind of shocked, stunned, elated, everything at the same time. And you saw by the reaction of the players. It was just incredible. It was one of those moments that will relive for a long time. I remember I was running all the way to them and celebrate with them. And uh, it was really great, great feeling. It was just an amazing feeling, you know. I can't even describe it. Can't really explain, like, inside of me, like, what was going on, because it was just so many things all the sacrifices we made just to make the next step, you know, and we, to be with my wife and my family, like, I could imagine what they're thinking as well, you know, just, you know, just to, just to let everything out. There are tears from Terry Antonis, tears of joy. You know, to score an own goal in the semi against, you know, the club I was at five years, I felt like I had everything on my shoulders, you know, um, and then just to score and, you know, and win the game, it was just like a massive relief. It's definitely one of the craziest football games I've played in. <laughs> now, Terry's goal will go down in history as being one of the uh, most important goals for the club. What a night. What another drama-filled Big Blue. But it's victory who have won it by three goals to two.
Sid Carly had done some things with Stuart and Mike once again. Even though we backed ourselves to get in there, there's still a the realisation we've done something pretty, pretty big here. There's no doubt Sydney had been an incredible team you know, for two seasons and everything we threw at them, they you know, stopped us from getting a result against them. So, you know sometimes you, you, you hope, you believe, you, you, you talk, but still you don't know. And then all of a sudden we'd gone through so much and no one gave us a chance really. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people wanted us to win. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think anyone really thought we could, you know. And Sydney seemed so confident, the way they talked during the week, you know, the stats supported them, the record at Allianz supported them, the record against us supported them. So there was, you know, there's no reason to doubt them other than what we believed. And so, yeah, it, it was just a real joyous moment. That, that sense of, we've just beaten Sydney at Allianz and we're going to win another grand final. I mean, that's what you play for. Arriving home, a mix of the walking wounded and deeply satisfied in victory colours, determined they haven't already played their grand final. We haven't done anything yet in the grand scheme of things. Uh, we've still got one more massive game next week, but uh, you know, a huge sense of uh, pride and, uh, and joy was in the, the playing and coaching group for sure. I think it took a few days to really grasp that, you know, we'd, we'd got into the grand final. Obviously, a lot of the boys playing, you know, 120 minutes. So training the first couple of days was a little bit uh, mixed. The start of the week was, I tell you, horrendous. I think uh, maybe uh, the boss was a bit worried. At one stage, he came up to me, he was like, oh, training wasn't too good. And I said, yeah, but we're calm, we're ready, we're, we're going to do this. When your attitude has been as it's been, improving, getting better and working on it, okay, combined with a desire and a, and a clear game plan, very powerful. Very powerful, Jimmy, the strength of ours. So we keep working on our strengths, Carl. We keep working on our strengths. Uh, and as I said, looking at uh, Newcastle, we spent quite a bit of time. Uh, so now we'll go through what that plan is. We're gonna come up with a plan for you that's gonna win us the grand final. Probably the longest week in my history, to be honest. <laughs> it felt like a long time just because I, I wasn't playing. I knew I wasn't going to play and there's nothing I could do about it. So I think that's why it dragged on. You know, I made sure I was out on the training pitch every day. I didn't miss meetings. I tried to get involved as much as possible, but um, I just wanted that game to, to hurry up. Having the open session on Thursday um, is massive for us. They're the 12th man in our squad, you know, so seeing the fans come and watching us train and cheering us on was a great feeling. It helps me put things into perspective, you know. To have that opportunity to, you know, make fans happy is, is massive. You know, experience is really important in these big uh, games. Uh, you know, I think we have a lot of experienced players in our, in our group and uh, uh, everybody feeling good because they know in the back of the mind that they played many of the grand finals and they feel good, so I hope it will help us. We always thought that was going to be a benefit to us as opposed to the opposition who, who only had a couple that had played in grand finals and some of them not for a long time. So it was really calm. To be honest, everyone was really relaxed, you know. Um, I think that helped a lot, you know, um, no one being nervous and feeling the pressure and, uh, you know, I'm usually really calm as well, but to see everyone the same way, I think that helped. The challenge with Newcastle is clearly the limited number of flights that go directly there. FFA uh, were really good. They, they were working the whole way through trying to find us a better, a better solution. They managed to put on a flight that actually wasn't on the schedule. They created a, a one just for us, and uh, in the end it, it worked out perfectly. We got to train normal time uh, in the morning on the Friday, and then we, we flew up there, and it felt like we had our own little private jet. It was, it was really kind of cool in the end. It was like, yeah, we're flying up there in our own private plane, we're going to the grand final, so it was, really, it was actually really nice. A little over 24 hours out from the A-League showpiece, and the Melbourne victory has rolled into town here in Newcastle. You can see... Home grand finalists in Newcastle deserve the final to be in Newcastle. They finished second, highest ranked team to make the grand final. So it was a, it was a great decision. And we knew when we get there, it was gonna be, you know, um, the, the city was, you know, gonna be, uh, you know, in such a hype and such a buzz that you know, we just want them to feel that there's a lot of people behind you. When we went into the hotel and seeing on the walls, you know, the messages they left for us was, you know, uh, quite awesome. 
reading all the messages and it, it's good. It builds you up for the game and it makes you, you want to do it for the fans as well, you know. Go out there and really give them something because it means a lot. I felt like everybody just relax and uh, know that today we can do and achieve something special. It was relaxed and I think it was more relaxed than last year. And Newcastle's is a nice place, there's a lot of sun, a lot of water, so I think that kind of helped us even more going in there. It's a, a massive occasion, um, I think just all the rewards and all the hard work, um, I guess, uh, you know, it, it has paid off and, and hopefully we can go one more step tonight and bring the trophy back to Melbourne. Guido, the kit man, sent uh, a WhatsApp through to each player individually and I didn't know, you know, what was coming and then I uh, opened it up. Good luck, guys. Go, Stevie. Go, boys. Costa, Costa. Baba, Roosters. Oh, Costa. I love you. Good luck. You know, straight away, it puts a smile on your face. Good luck, Daddy. That alone was enough motivation for me. Seeing the kids, uh, you know, especially the little ones, you know. You cannot ask for more, you know. I, I was already, uh, I could play straight away 10 a.m. the game because I was ready. To get those little messages before the game, I mean, it was, uh, it was quite emotional and uh, just, yeah, spurs you on a little bit more. I think something that's uh, important to all of us is we recognise you know, where we've come from. February 10, we get together, and it was time for honesty. Realistic uh, honesty. Small group of men, committed men, very powerful. It's gonna take everybody. It's gonna take all of us. It's gonna be a battle and it's gonna take all of us. So we dictate our own story, and you have it. They stood in our way, and ultimately, it's them or us. I remember one really great moment in the bus on the way to the stadium where we'd come to a bit of a bottleneck with some traffic and the, the police were directing cars a certain way, they were obviously trying to manage the flow of the traffic. And we looked to our right and there seemed to be a thousand Melbourne Victory supporters who were marching up that road towards the stadium. And it was just like an endless parade of, of people in blue. I haven't really asked the players, you know. I seen it and I was at the front of the bus and you know, curious to know if any of the players noticed them. Uh, the bus was stopping and we watched all the supporters walking to the stadium. That was uh, a so important moment, I believe, for me and for all the players, watching our supporters behind us. I'm like, oh, we mean business today, boys. You know, it was, it was, it was a great scene to see. Victory fans, as you're about to see, are on the march into Newcastle Stadium here. There are immense pitches, immense numbers. Some 5,000 Victory fans, they've come in full voice, full of passion, and they are ready to win here tonight up against the Jets. At that point, you know, any information that's new is too late. So I tend to just try and stay out of their way uh, as much as possible. You know, they've all got their own routines and uh, rituals and, you know, everyone's different. All the preparations are, you know, done uh, by that stage and it's just focusing on, uh, on the game. When we come out the tunnel, I think for the warm-up, um, I was, I was just nowhere near expecting that many victory fans there, and it was it was overwhelming for a second. And sort of had to you know, remain calm. We obviously warmed up on that side too, and for me, it felt like a home final uh, in that warm up. It was so loud for Melbourne Victory supporters. It just felt like we are home, uh, and and that's what our supporters did for us. You know, they make us feel we are home, we are close to each other, and. Uh, uh, it kind of a feeling, don't worry, we are with you, together, we stand by you, you know, and that, that was an amazing feeling. You know, the noise and that block and, you know, taking 5,000 people or whatever it was to an away grand final to, um, you know, carry on the way they did was uh, something special. And, and they're the memories, those type of things, they're the memories that uh, will last forever for, for the group. That was the, the, that was the cherry 
that uh, you know that we needed, and, I, and I've no doubt in my mind helped us. It was tremendous. Brilliant stuff, Melbourne Victory fans. Just brilliant stuff. Paid their money to get here by hook or by crook, and they are here, and their numbers making so much noise. played in, in, in massive games, you know, with bigger crowds. But when I went out there on that pitch, saw our fans, you know, I was a bit rattled. It was, it, it was tough. You know, it was uh, emotional because, you know, we're coming from fourth, um, in a grand final, it's it's tough. So that experience in dealing with the game situations is is priceless, and it showed. Off we go. The hype has been building all week. Now it's time to deliver. We knew it was going to be a tough game. They're a team that fights for every second ball. They're very physical as well. Um, so we we knew we had to to match that, and our quality will show. It. It's bound to be a little bit of adrenaline flying in the early stages before things settled out. To score so early, it caught me by surprise. <laughs> Carl comes over and they're, they're you know, trying to bring the ball in away from where to bring it a little bit closer to the infield. And they managed to steal a few yards. We have uh, our uh, our way to go to to give crosses, and uh, for normally one hand is first pose. Leroy usually overhits his first two corners before he kind of gets his eye in. I think I've kind of found throughout the year, so told myself it was coming to me, and, and it did. When the ball went to the, the far post, I found that my marker had sort of stayed on the edge of the box, and I had a few yards on him. Donks nods it down. Whether he saw me or not, I don't know, or he's just putting it into an area. Nah, to be honest, no, I just tried to get it back in the middle. As I was dropping down, I just thought, you know, hit it across the keeper, and, you know, anything could happen. Let's go towards Donaghy, who met it at that far post. It's back. It's the earliest goal ever in a grand final. I remember going to run the opposite way, and then I thought, nah, our fans are, are that side. So I took about 10 little quick steps to turn, and I didn't want to run too fast so the boys could catch me, and then just sort of stopped and, uh, you know, took it all in, all the, all the screams and chants and all the boys getting around. And 4,000 victory fans go wild. When the goal went in, it was nice to be you know, close to the action and to see the reaction of the boys. You know, I think it was Matty Act and he didn't know whether to come over and celebrate with the coaches or to, to run out into the pitch. You know, everybody reacts quite differently. Always good to score special in big games like this early. Will VAR be checking this? He's clearly offside. It goes without saying that the decision was incorrect. Before VAR, refs had to make decisions and they got them wrong and right all the time. It's not, it's nothing that has changed in the game. This time, uh, was it an uh, offside goal? Um, uh, what you can do. The fact that it was on the biggest day, you know, it's not going to sit well. But what a start for Kevin Muscat's team and just what he would have wanted. We didn't have uh, history this season in particular of keeping clean sheets. So to think when we scored after nine minutes that the game was going to finish 1-0, I, I can't honestly say I thought that was going to be the case. Not that I thought we couldn't score again, but I probably thought to myself at some point we'll, we'll concede because that had been our kind of MO most of the season. You know, people always say, you know, why are you dropping so deep? Why are you dropping so deep? It wasn't premeditated to drop so deep. It was forced on us by the opposition. During the first half, I, I really had some moments where I thought, 
you know, they're putting us under a lot of pressure here. They're getting themselves in some really good positions and, and if this continues, then, you know, it's going to be difficult. Katrumbis with the cross, and Donovan! Great save, Thomas! And victory scoop it away, thanks to Thomas Deng. I think a big difference from, from this final to maybe the last two years, I, I didn't go in there thinking I need to be unbelievable, I need to make huge saves to win the game. I just, I just come out there and just played the game for what it was. And when McGree cut inside, I think most keepers would, would, would anticipate and feel exposed, especially as a left footer, they usually come around and go your far post. But I don't know, I just, just stayed up and stayed still. I had a, had a feeling he was going to try to do it at the near post and just waited for it. Drops the shot on the right of McGree. Great save, Thomas again. And Jason Hoffman can't convert the rebounds. I expected that was going to go in. And you just see this this, this big dude in a, in a red jumpsuit flying across and, and managed to save it. And I just thought, mate, it's, that's, that's kind of next level stuff. I think when a goalkeeper has a massive game, it really uh, flows through the team. Once I saw that, I thought, you know, they're not going to score tonight. Well, there we go. What a first half. Melbourne victory at half time. Uh, 45 minutes away from a fourth championship. Adjusted a few things at uh, half time so we wouldn't be uh, so deep. When the ball comes in your zone, we're first to react, we're first to the ball. We get the opportunity to keep it down, then we go forward in a calm manner. And the reason we got so deep is they kept picking up all the second balls, so we adjusted uh, what that looks like, and Terry was a big part of that, Terry and Carl, uh, and they executed unbelievably in the second half. just wrapping the player up. No room to breathe. It's like trying to get away from an octopus at the moment. Petratos. Decent ball in. Look at that from Thomas Deng. You know, I've seen Tommy Deng as a young kid. He was really shy. Uh, a highlight for me was getting to see him stand up and be a man and, you know, manage the game like a man. Deng's been outstanding tonight. To see scenes like that in a grand final, you know, you know you're in a good place. Come for a cross, I'm, I'm not sure who got me, but I, I felt it straight away and then just put my hand there to feel and it had all, all blood on my gloves. So, yeah, it, it felt okay. There was, no, there was no dizziness or anything. It's just a, just, just a knock and they come and strap that one on. The second collision, um, yeah, once again, just watching the ball and, um, yeah, I guess just, 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 felt, just felt the knock and felt my ear with my, with my left hand and I, and I I saw some more blood. At, at that point, I was a bit worried because I thought it was coming from, from the ear, from, from the inside, which I thought, oh, this is, this is not good. But uh, the dot came out and I, I split the... I don't know what you call it. What do you call this little lobe bit here? Not, not the ear lobe, but the central lobe, whatever it is. But uh, yeah, that was split, so it wasn't, wasn't too nice. But um, no, nah, there's nothing really bad. Just bandage me and let's, let's go, yeah. No chance I was coming off. <laughs> The way we dug our heels in and, and managed the game, you know, it probably wasn't the prettiest game to watch, um, but it doesn't matter. We, the way we performed as a team to get the job done was exceptional. It wasn't uh, our best game of football um, in terms of playing the type of football we, we were used to playing. I think we were pretty comfortable for that second half and we are probably the better team. We didn't allow them a shot on target. Such was the, the belief and drive in the group. You don't, you know, do that in a grand final unless you have a lot of experience. The Victory fans know that their team are on the brink. And there it is, Kevin Musket's team are the record breakers.
it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy feeling. It was just an amazing feeling to be honest to win the final and just be happy and feel like you know you've contributed to the team and uh, helped to win this amazing club another trophy. A relief, you know, uh, emotional, very emotional, uh, special after what we went through this season. I don't know. It was unique uh, feelings. It's pure happiness, pure joy, tingles. Uh, it's hard to explain. You know, it's just it's just moments in moments that are so short that so much effort goes into. That's why I do it for moments like those. Proud, a bit of relief because you've worked so hard all year and you've, you've achieved what you wanted to achieve. That was a perfect end to what was a, a really. Uh, testing sort of season. It was just, yeah, just pure, pure elation, pure happiness. I think we've got to be so proud of, of what we achieved um, when probably nobody else thought it was possible to do and, you know, I'm extremely proud to, to be able to say I'm a part of this team. You know, we've done something that uh, no one gave us a chance to do. Uh, no one thought we could do. Uh, no one's done before uh, in the A League. For all the knocks and bumps and bruises we had along the way, uh, it was more just a relief that you know this is what we knew we could produce. This one was m more, more special because uh, just we, how we went through the season, you know, with a lot of up and downs, and uh, uh, was definitely the hardest one. And you know, the hardest one is uh, the sweetest one, I think. Well, I can't thank the group enough the way they. The way they went about everything when fingers were being pointed and, and they were getting booed and comments were getting personal and everyone just stuck together and we held up the trophy and and probably you know a lot of the applause was coming from the people that were booing us and we know that's football that's fine but just the way they kept their heads and the way they became men some of those young boys is, is fantastic and why I play the game.